Hi, it's Rosetta Wood, Wood with Paleo Diet Magazine. The Paleo Diet Magazine provides advice, inspiration to help you live a better, healthier, and incredibly fun paleo lifestyle. Today we have Negar Fanuni. Negar is going to talk to us about the health benefits of yoga. Negar is a writer, fitness expert, entrepreneur, and mom. Negar is, a, is passionate about helping people empower themselves to live a vibrant, fulfilling life. Her intention is to teach women how to cultivate their inner radiance, living a lifestyle of their own design. A Los Angeles native who resides in Santa Monica, Negar brings her 13 years of training exper experience to worldwide workshops, numerous fitness publications, seminars, and retreats, and her exclusive ladies online coaching program. Aside from pull-ups and deadlifts, some of her favorite things include red wine, dark chocolate, traveling, yoga, shopping, collecting books, and reading with her son, and cuddling with her French bulldog. I'm interviewing her because I tried yoga and had a great experience afterwards, and wanted to have an expert in the fitness field explain to me all the wonderful physical and mental things that was happening to my body. Hi, Negar. Welcome to our community. Hi, thanks for having me. It's nice to have you. My first question to you is, what prompt you to get started in the fitness industry? Um, well, I've been in the fitness industry for 14 years now, and uh, I, it was really my first job after graduating high school was working as a personal trainer. I have always been athletic. I played sports all growing up and through high school, and I was working at the YMCA in an administrative uh, standpoint. and just started getting more interested in the weight room and started learning about how to become a personal trainer and, and just took a couple of training certifications and just started from there. So it's kind of been something that's always been a part of my life and um, it's evolved very much over the years from just being a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer into so many different things. But the base of it really was just my personal interest in exercise. Okay. Now, um, what led you to start practicing yoga? Um, I started practicing yoga actually at that same YMCA, the very first time I ever took a yoga class. And I started practicing yoga simply because it was something that was offered as, as part of the group fitness at the YMCA. And it was included in the membership for being an employee there. So I figured I would just give it a try. And I remember in my first class at the time, I was 18 years old, and I remember my first class, there were women twice my age, doing things that just seemed so amazing and so incredible, and they were so in touch with their bodies, and they were able to do things with their bodies that I couldn't even comprehend. So I remember thinking that I'm 18 years old, I'm athletic, I'm young, I'm healthy, I should be able to do those things or some semblance of them, and, and that really, that initial desire to perform that way was what led me to start practicing yoga. Now, obviously, I've been practicing yoga for 14 years, and the the aspect of, of competition is not something that's part of my yoga practice, but as an 18-year-old athlete, it was what initially got me um, into practicing yoga. Okay. Now, when you practice yoga, um, is there a different, what is the difference from stretching with yoga and other type of fitness program? So there are several different types of yoga, so that question is not something that you can necessarily answer very simply because there are very many different types of yoga that you can practice, some that are more vigorous, um, like vinyasa yoga and anyasara yoga, and some types of yoga that are more restorative in nature and, and rely more heavily on holding, stretching poses, and things like that. Uh, I would say what makes yoga different than simply stretching, like before and after um, a workout, is that it incorporates the breath. So every movement is matched 
to either an inhale or an exhale, and there's a, a very big um, emphasis placed on the breath, as well as yoga does encourage a lot of strength and stability in addition to stretching and mobility. So it's not just stretching, you're actually strengthening as well. Okay. Now, what about flexibility? Can I do yoga uh, if I'm not, like, my body isn't um, used to being flexed in different directions? And what do I need to begin yoga? Um, anybody can do yoga. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be flexible to that's what discourages people. They think like, oh, I can't, I can't move like that. I'm not bendy. I can't do yoga. And it's actually, it's interesting because if you did practice yoga more often, you would become more flexible, which is important to a healthy body from a holistic standpoint. But you simply need to start by practicing yoga that is for people who don't necessarily have as much mobility or flexibility. So you wouldn't jump into a level three vinyasa class if you're somebody who's got, you know, super tight hamstring or super tight hips and you're not comfortable in those positions, number one. Number two, um, you can just modify. So when you step on your yoga mat, that's your practice. And if you go to a yoga class and the person next to you has their legs behind their head, that doesn't mean that that's what you need to do. You just need to modify the poses so that it suits where your body is at the time. And learning to accept where your body is at the time is a really important part of your yoga practice. Okay. Uh, do you have any special tips for new students to survive their first yoga class? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of things. I would say make sure that you're going to be a class that the level is is appropriate for you. So do a little research. Make sure that the instructor is accustomed to teaching beginners, that it's an instructor that's going to give you special attention, and maybe even talk to the instructor when you get there and let them know that it's your first time, so that they... They can they can pay a little bit more attention to you than they would if they didn't know then they if they didn't know it was your first time in class so that's really important um, get there early uh, so that you can talk to the instructor and so that you can also get your space feel comfortable and get acquainted with the environment and really just show up with an open mind and an open heart and when you're there know that you don't have to do everything that the instructor says. You can stop, you can rest, you can take breaks, and you can modify poses. You don't have to do exactly what everybody else is doing. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, can you share with our listeners some of the physical and mental benefits of yoga? Absolutely. Um, coming from a weightlifting and athletic background, yoga it has been really beneficial for me and for a lot of my clients in the sense that it provides them balance to people who primarily work out in the gym. Because the gym is such an aggressive environment, it's an environment where a lot of emphasis is placed on competition, a lot of emphasis is placed on strength. Yoga has to balance that out both mentally and physically by giving you an environment that requires you to slow down, requires you to pay more attention to your breath, and isn't about competition in any way, shape, or form. So it's really helpful in that way. Uh, it also helps you to become a little bit more aware of your body. There's a lot of kinesthetic awareness involved in your yoga practice because the positions, uh, the alignment of the positions is so specific that, and there's no mirrors in the yoga class, right? So you really have to understand what's happening with your body and feel your body. And that can really help you, not just in the weight room and in your lift, but in so many different aspects of life, just having better body awareness. Um, Physically, you can certainly build some strength and build some muscle, particularly arm strength and upper body strength with a lot of the arm balances in yoga. If you're just starting out as an exercise, as an exerciser, you've never exercised before, yoga is a great way to build strength simply by manipulating your body as a weighted tool. So that's really important. Um, in terms of connecting to the breath, Yoga is really helpful physiologically. A lot of people are disconnected from their breath. They don't breathe through their diaphragm. They breathe through their chest and um, and really up high. And a lot of times that can cause neck problems and shoulder problems and posture problems. And yoga can really help to alleviate that by helping connect you to your diaphragmatic breath. So those are just a couple of ways that it's really beneficial. Okay. What is power yoga? 
Um, Tower yoga is the type of yoga that is based more on um, really challenging poses. A lot of standing poses are involved in Tower yoga, so a lot of standing balancing poses where you'll be on one leg. Um, you'll also be moving a little bit more quickly, so it's a vinyasa type, a vinyasa style of yoga, meaning that you will flow through the movements and you'll move through them more quickly than you would in yoga that's not termed power yoga. Um, you'll also do arm balances and inversions. So inversions are anything where you're upside down. It can be anywhere from a shoulder stand to a headstand, arm stand to a different types of handstands even. So power yoga, it moves a little bit more quickly. There's a lot of standing balancing poses, arm balances, and inversions. Uh, would you suggest a, a beginner's do power yoga? I would not suggest that a beginner start off their first class with power yoga. It really depends on where your strength level is with when you're beginning. Um, you might be able to jump into a power yoga class if you've been lifting for years and you're pretty flexible and you've never practiced yoga. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because power yoga moves more quickly and is more challenging. If you're not familiar with the basic yoga poses, it can be really frustrating and it can end up in a situation where you're not really going to get a lot of benefit out of the class because you're trying to keep up with the class, but you don't even know what the poses are supposed to feel and look like. Um, why are you supposed to refrain from eating two to three hours before a yoga class? Um, you know, I don't know that that's, a, that's necessarily true for everyone. I know that some experts will recommend that. Um, so there's not really one way, one way that's necessarily good. Some people will perform well if they don't eat, and some people perform better if they don't eat. So it just depends on the individual. But I know a lot of instructors recommend that you don't eat right before class because of digestion. So you're going to be doing a lot of cooking and a lot of um, situations where you might be upside down and, and rotating, and that can be uncomfortable if you're digesting a meal. So that is one reason why a lot of yoga instructors will caution against eating a meal like we're going to class. Okay. Now, how do you incorporate your passion for fitness and nutrition into your family's lifestyle? Well, we are a very active family. My husband is in the fitness industry as well. And my son has grown up going to the gym because he's grown up with me. So I've taken him to the gym since he was a baby, different gym daycares. Um, when I used to run a gym out in Maryland, he would hang out in my office and play Legos. So he's been around gym culture his entire life. And he's also very active. So... We will go on family bike rides, we'll go hiking on the weekends with our dogs. Uh, you know, we walk to school in the morning, we walk home from school in the afternoon, and we cook together. Uh, my husband and I will cook together a lot, my son helps in the kitchen. So we just make um, healthy living a family activity because it's a part of our day-to-day -day life. Uh, we also have a garage gym at home. And so sometimes we'll, I'll bring my son in there and put him through a little workout, um, only if he wants to. We don't force him to exercise. But uh, we, we just keep it as something that's, that's a normal part of our life without it being uh, excessive or forced. It's really just something that, that we do naturally and it just flows through our life. Okay. Now, I learned from your bio that you like dark chocolate. Now, as oh. so, <laughs> yes, as someone who enjoys indulging her sweet tooth every now and then, what is your advice on falling off the bandwagon and incorporating cheat days? I'm, I'm not really a huge fan of cheat days um, personally. Again, that depends on the person. Some people psychologically prefer to have a cheat day, and some people it really just creates a psychological barrier. I prefer to kind of just sprinkle in indulgences wherever it, it, it fits into my lifestyle rather than have a set cheat day. Uh, I found that when I was doing cheat days, I was eating things that I wouldn't normally eat because it was my cheat day, not because I necessarily wanted them. And so 
I find that what works for me, which again is not what works for everyone, but what works for me is to buy it on a regular basis. And when indulgences, for example, if I'm out at dinner, I'll have a glass of wine. Or if I'm on a vacation, like to go to New York for vacation, I'll have a slice of pizza because that's when I want to eat pizza when I'm in New York. So um, when indulgences present themselves in situations, I feel more comfortable indulging in them when I know that 90% of the time I keep my diet clean. Now, as a coach, you have clients from all, all walks of life. Of all the different custom plans you make for each individual, what is the one thing you tell all of your clients that you want them to stick with? In terms of nutrition? Or? In tr nutrition, yes. Okay. Um, the biggest thing that I teach clients, I don't actually create customized meal plans because I don't, I don't want to tell them what to eat and when to eat it. I want to teach them how to eat their life. I only work with women, and uh, women in particular tend to have a lot of emotional ties to food. And there's a lot of guilt involved, there's a lot of shame involved. And so rather than give them a day-to-day -day meal plan for them to follow, I teach them how to eat for their bodies and their schedules and their lives sustainably going forward for the rest of their lives. So the number one thing that I teach my clients is to learn to release any food-related guilt, which is a really important aspect of being able to eat for life. So I tell them before you eat something, ask yourself, am I going to feel guilty about eating this later? And if you can confidently answer no, whether it's a grilled chicken breast or a chocolate bar, if you can confidently answer that you're not going to feel guilty the next day, then you have a green light. If you feel a sense of guilt in your gut when you think about eating this food, then you can proceed with caution. So learning to release that guilt is really important because food is fuel, but it's also love and pleasure, and it's, it's the way that we express ourselves culturally. It's the way that we um, we commune with our loved ones. So enjoy food, but not if it's going to make you feel guilty the next day. Okay, that's good information to know. Uh, how can our listeners get in contact with you? Um, you can uh, stay in touch with me through the Eat With and Be Happy Facebook page. That's primarily where I interact with readers. So that's um, if you search Eat With and Be Happy or Facebook.com slash Eat With and Be Happy. Uh, I'm also pretty interactive on Instagram, so my handle is just my first and last name, my last name. And those are the places uh, that I typically interact with readers on Facebook and Instagram. So if you write on my Facebook wall, I'll get to your questions. Um, and if you interact on Facebook threads or Instagram photos, then I will certainly get back to you there. Okay, that sounds good. I'm sure our readers will appreciate that. Okay, thank you so much for sharing with us this valuable, valuable information about mental and physical benefits of yoga and nutrition. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.